that won't enable you to get an A or, or B necessarily, but that'll, that'll help. Okay? All right, picking up with Hamlet. Where is Hamlet? That's not the right page. Um, I want to pick up with scene, Act 5, Scene 2, page 1690. We don't have many pages left in here. This only goes to 1700, right? So Hamlet and Horatio come in. They're in a hallway somewhere in the castle. And Horatio wants to know what happened. How did you get back? I'm, I'm backing up a little bit from where we left off on Wednesday. And so Hamlet says, yeah, I remember the circumstances as to how I came here. So he talks about being asleep in the belly of the boat and getting up in the dark, line 12 or so, finds Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, okay, takes their packet, that is their sealed envelope with letters, goes back to his room, cuts it open, breaks the seal, cuts it open, and reads what the actual charge to England is. Right? My head should be struck off. Line 24. Horatio, is it possible? That is, would the king really go that far? Here's the commission. And he gives him the actual letter. Okay? So this is proof, right? This is proof. It's written in the king's hand. Okay? Read it at more leisure. You want to hear how I... Yeah, 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 go ahead. So he says, Being thus be netted around with villainies, surrounded by villainy, by deceit, by plotting, he says, ere I can make a prologue to my brains, they had begun the play. That is, they started this course of action. I sat me down, devised a new commission, wrote it fair. Wrote it fair meaning he didn't blot the ink at all. He doesn't have lines crossed through. He doesn't have words crossed out. It's nice and perfect. Okay. He said, and I labored much how to forget that learning, but sir, now it did me yeoman service. Wilt thou know the affair? Want to hear what I wrote? Yeah. An earnest conjuration from the king to, skipping a bunch, that on the view and knowing of these contents, without debate and further, more or less, he should the bearers put to sudden death, not shriving time aloud. Kill them immediately. Don't allow them to confess. Don't allow them to go to a priest and seek absolution. Why? Well, what did Hamlet say in when was it? Act 3 when he is on his way to his mother's room and he finds Claudius and he's praying. He says, now I might do it, Pat. Then, well, that's not good enough. Because he'd go to heaven. He doesn't want Rosencrantz and Guildenstern to go to heaven. He wants them to go to hell. Okay? How is this sealed? That is, it's not enough to just write it, make it look all nice and fancy, and close it and put it back. How is it sealed means what makes it official? Right? How do you know something that the president issues is actually something that the president issues? What goes along with the office of president? There is a seal. Okay? Some of you, for whatever reason MTSU requires, probably had to get something notarized. Okay? Which means you go to a notary public, and they sign it, and then what do they do? They have a little stamp. And that stamp signifies, I am a notary public, etc. Okay? The kind of seal Hamlet's talking about here, i use this one, is like a ring. Or it can be an actual stamp that would be shaped, you know. You've got a handle, 
It kind of looks like this. And you have the stamp here, and then it has something engraved on the underside. So what he had to do is he had to melt wax, and then he puts that seal on the wax. Okay? So where did he get the seal? Even in that heaven, even in that was heaven ordinate. I had my father's signet, his ring in my purse, which was the model of the Danish seal. By using that ring, that signifies Denmark says do this. Okay? So he says, I folded it up. I gave it the impression. I put the seal of the ring on the wax. So Rosencrantz and Guildenstern go to it. They're at their Hamlet. Why, man, they did make love to this employment. They were eager to do this, Hamlet says. They are not near my conscience. In other words, I don't feel any guilt for what happens to them. Their defeat does by their own insinuation grow. Insinuation. Interference. Interference between what? It was dangerous when the baser nature comes between the pass, the gloss tells you the thrust, and fell incensed, fiercely angered, points of mighty opposites. Well, who are the mighty opposites? Hamlet? Claudius. Rosencrantz get between them. It's like being metal between hammer and anvil. You don't want to be that metal. Hamlet says, they got what they deserved. Oh, what a king is this. So that's when Hamlet goes to those lines we left off with on Wednesday. Does it not think thee stand me now upon? He that hath killed my king, whored my mother, popped in between the election, and my hopes thrown out his angle, that is, went fishing for me, for my proper life, and with such cousinage, trickery, is it not perfect conscience to quit, repay him with this arm? And is it not to be damned to let this canker of our nature come in further evil? That is, and Hamlet is saying, Wouldn't I be wrong to allow this to continue? He is, Hamlet calls, a canker. Claudius, that is, is a canker, an ulcer, or possibly the worm which destroys buds and leaves. Hamlet is saying, if I don't stop Claudius, what's going to happen? Louder? It'll get worse. It'll get worse? What will happen to Denmark? If it's an ulcer or a canker that eats at the roots of flowers, it'll rot from within. Horatio, it must be shortly known to him from England what is the issue of the business there. That is, he's going to find out soon what you did. Hamlet, it'll be short. The interim is mine. The period between now and when he finds out, I'm in control. And a man's life's no more than to say one. What's he mean? Life's brief. That's what he means. How long does it take to say one? Not very long. Hamlet is saying, in the grand scheme of things, we're pretty insignificant. He says, but I'm sorry, Horatio, that to Laertes I forgot myself. I shouldn't have said to Laertes what I, should, what I said. For by the image of my cause, I see the portraiture of his. That is, because I know what has motivated me, death of my father, I know why Laertes is upset. I killed his father. I'll court his favors. That is, I'll try to make it up. I'll apologize. I'll try to do whatever. And in comes Osric, a courtier. And Osric's there for what purpose? 
What does he issue to Hamlet on behalf of Claudius and Laertes? A challenge to a duel. But it's not a real duel. It's a pretend match. It's like a boxing match. You don't box to the death. If you really duel, it's to the death. But this is a match, right? So, we're told they're going to be using rapiers and daggers around line 133. And Osric says, the king Sir Eth wagered with him six Barbary horses and six French rapiers and poniards, blah, 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 blah. Wagered what? That you will win. That you will beat Laertes. Right? So, Hamlet goes off, or he's about to. And we see the queen come down. Act 5, scene 2, page 1695 or so. Well, before the king and queen comes in, Hamlet and Horatio are talking. And Horatio tells Hamlet, bottom of 1694, you will lose this wager. Laertes is going to win. Right? Hamlet, I don't think so. Top of 1695, line 184. Since he went into France, I have been in continual practice. Yeah, but Hamlet earlier said that he's what? Given up his daily exercises. But who was he talking to when he said that? That was Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. When he fi finished that speech saying, come on, tell me why you're here. Come on, tell me really why you're here. I know you're not here really just to cheer me up. You were sent for, weren't you? Should we talk? I don't know. Yes, we were sent for. That kind of helps us to maybe understand that perhaps everything Hamlet says in that speech to Rosencrantz and Guildenstern is a lie. Okay. So now he tells Horatio, I've been practicing every day. I shall win at the odds. That is, I'm not going to win outright. But because the odds are like 6 to 1 against him, if Hamlet wins 5 to 1, he wins. Okay? But thou wouldst not think how all's here that it, thou wouldst not think how ill all is here about my heart. It doesn't matter. Nay, good my lord, it's but fluid. It is such a kind of gain giving as would perhaps trouble a woman. All right? Horatio, come on, tell me what's going on. If your mind dislike anything, obey it. In other words, Hamlet is telling Horatio, something feels funny about this. Something's just not right. That's why Horatio says, if your mind dislike anything, obey it. Go with what? He's saying, go with your gut. If your gut says, don't do it, don't do it. I will forestall their repair thither and say you're not fit. Tell them you're ill. Okay? Hamlet, no, no, no. Not a wit. We defy augury. What is augury? It's interesting. There's no gloss there. Kind of like prophesying, fortune telling. Okay? You're going to see when we do Oedipus and Antigone, they have prophets who do augury. How do they do that? They kill a bird, they spill its guts on an altar, and they read what the guts say. Okay? We defy augury. There's a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. What? Christ says. Not a sparrow falls, but my father is not aware of it. Just as you, every hair on your head is numbered. That's what Hamlet's talking about. There's a special providence. Providence governs everything. No matter what happens, God is ultimately entirely in control. If it be now, 
Tis not to come. What's the it? My death. If I'm to die now, then, Hamlet says, then I won't die later. Or, duh. That's pretty common logic. If it be not to come, it will be now. Hamlet is saying, what will be, will be. There's no changing fate. There's no changing destiny. If it be not now, if I'm not supposed to die now, then guess what? I will die later. He's saying, it's in God's hands. The readiness is all. What does he mean, the readiness is all? The gloss, all, all that matters. The readiness is all that matters. That gloss is not very helpful. What's the readiness for? Death. It's what I argue when I teach my, my Harry Potter and J.R. Tolkien course, Lord Green's course. It's what the seven Harry Potter books are all about. Preparing for death. How to die well. Because throughout the books, you have a whole bunch of examples of people who don't die well. And they all build toward the final book when Harry has to walk into the forbidden forest knowing I will die. And the fact is that he walks in, head held high, chest thrust out. He is willing to face it. He's not being dragged, kicking and screaming. Hamlet says, the readiness for death is everything. Okay. Since no man of aught he leaves knows, what is it to leave betimes? It's funny, there's a number there, but there's no clause. Um... So, they go in, there's a table prepared, the king greets Hamlet, says, come Hamlet, come and take this hand from me. So he comes, shakes Hamlet's hand, oh, excuse me, puts Laertes' hands into, hand into Hamlet's. Now notice this speech from Hamlet. This is pretty important. Because it's the first time we see this idea given Anywhere in the history of the world, this is the first time it shows up, to my knowledge at least. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Hamlet says to Laertes, give me your pardon, sir. I have done you wrong. But pardon it as you are a gentleman. Okay. If you are a gentleman, you should pardon me. This presence, these people, knows, and you must needs have heard how I am punished with a sore distraction. Everybody here knows. Hamlet's a little, a little crazy. What I have done that might your nature, honor, and exception roughly wake, I hear proclaimed was madness. What I have done. What has he done? Killed Polonius. He says, my killing Polonius might do what? Might your nature, honor, and exception roughly wake. It's natural for you to be angry at me. But he says, it wasn't me that did it. It was my madness. Was it Hamlet wrong, Laertes? Never Hamlet. If Hamlet from himself be taken away, taken away. And when he's not himself does wrong Laertes, then Hamlet does it not. Hamlet denies it. It's almost like he's talking about the split personality disorder. There's Hamlet and there's Fred. Hamlet didn't kill Polonius. Fred did that. What's he mean? When I killed Polonius, I wasn't in my right mind. Therefore, I didn't kill him. 
It was the madness that was in me that killed him. This is the first instance of world in world history of an insanity plea for innocence. That if you are insane, you cannot be held guilty for a crime. Why? Because it wasn't you. You weren't yourself. Who does it then? His madness. His madness. So, if it be so, if that is true, Hamlet is of the faction that is wrong. Why? Because the madness, what? Inhabits Hamlet's body. So when people see Hamlet's body, what do they assume? Oh, that was Hamlet. His madness is poor Hamlet's enemy. Right? Notice the idea there that one can be separated from oneself. First time we hear that in the play is when Polonius says, if I am wrong about Hamlet's madness being caused by love, take this from this. He actually does this from this. Head from my shoulders, meaning literally kill me. But what else does that mean? Then I am mad. I am crazy. If my mind is not working in connection with the rest of my body. Right? Sir, in this audience, he says, let my disclaiming from a purpose evil free me so far in your most generous thoughts. I never intended to kill Polonius. It's true, right? What did he immediately say? I took you for your better. What did he say? Possibly. If my reading of the quote-unquote to be or not to be soliloquy, which it isn't, is correct, and Hamlet is aware that he is being spied upon, so that when he gets to the end of that speech and he tells Polonius, look you to your father, tell him to go to his house and close the doors. Okay. That's Hamlet's way of telling Polonius, don't get in my way, old man. You will die. And what does he do? It's like Polonius goes from right from there, straight up to Gertrude's room, and stands behind the heiress again. I didn't intend to kill him. I thought that was his better, Claudius. Therefore, he says, free me so far in your most generous thoughts that I've shot my arrow o'er the house and hurt my brother. I consider you a brother. I didn't intend this. Laertes, I'm satisfied in nature. That is, I'm personally satisfied, but honor says what? What does Inigo Montoya say to the six-fingered man in Princess Bride? You killed my father, prepare to die. That's what Laertes means. Okay? Great one-liners in that film. I'm satisfied in nature, but honor demands you gotta die. Whose motive in this case should stir me most of my revenge. Why? Because it's a revenge tragedy. It's not only Hamlet's revenge for his father, it's Laertes' revenge for his father. But in my terms of honor, nope. Nope, you need it. You got to do more, Hamlet. And will no reconcilement till by some elder masters of known honor I have a voice and precedent of peace to keep my name ungorged. That is, unless I get some kind of authoritative pronouncement that is some kind of ruling on my behalf. You owe me. There's a system in the Germanic peoples that was also in Anglo-Saxon England, which is long before Shakespeare, where you had payment of were-guild. Were means man, like werewolf. That's man-wolf. Guild, gold. Man-gold. So that if you accidentally kill somebody, that person's family can demand from you payment. And how much they, how much you pay to that person depends upon what level of society the dead person 
was a part of. Right. Polonius would be somewhat high ranking, so the amount would be large. That's kind of what Laertes is appealing to. Right? So he says, but until that time, I do receive your offered love like love and will not wrong it. And yet, unbeknownst to Hamlet, what does Laertes, in his mind, know he's going to do in the next few minutes? And knows what he's a part of. Louder? One, he's going to kill him. And two, he's part of a plot to kill him. Because if Laertes doesn't kill him, Claudius will. Okay? So Hamlet says, I embrace you freely, and will this brother's wager frankly play? Come on. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do this, Vincent Magic. Give us the foils. So Hamlet says, I'll be your foil, Laertes. In my ignorance, your skill shall, like the star in the darkest night, stick fiery off in the Notice Shakespeare uses there the idea of the literary technique of a foil. I'll be your foil, Laertes. How? Because everybody knows you're an ace at this. And what's the scuttlebutt around Elsinore about Hamlet? What did his mother say? He's fat and out of shape. So, by your fencing me, your skill will show all of that much better. Take an NFL team, have them play a high school team. They become the foil, or the high school team becomes the foil for the NFL team. Pretty sad, actually. Laertes, you mock me. You're not serious. Hamlet, no. King, give him the foils. Okay. So, Hamlet says, yeah, and I know what the wagers are. Your grace has laid the odds on the weaker side. That is me. I do not fear it. I've seen you both. But since he is better, we have therefore odds. But since he's better than you, we've got odds. Okay? So, Hamlet takes a foil. He likes it. These foils have all the length. That is, they're the same length, right? Because it wouldn't be fair to give Hamlet a foil that's three feet long and to give Laertes one that's five feet long. Longer reach. So they're equal. So the king says, let's put some stoops of wine, cups of wine on the table. If Hamlet give the first or second hit or quit an answer at the third exchange, let all the battles fire their cannons. The king shall drink to Hamlet's health. And he says, and I'll put an onion in, which is a jewel. A union shall he throw, blah, blah, blah. So they start to fight or play. Hamlet, come on. Laertes, come on. Hamlet, one, no. When Hamlet says one, he means, I got you. There are certain parts of the body that count in fencing, and Hamlet says, I got you. I hit you. Laertes, no, you didn't. Judgment. Ref. <laughs> Ostrich, a hit, a very palpable hit. Well, what does palpable mean? <laughs> Touching. You can't have a hit without it. Touching, okay? So, drum, trumpet, boom, cannons go off. Laertes, okay, again. The king will stop, Hamlet. Have a drink. Hamlet, I'll, I'll play it about first, then I'll drink. So they play again. Hamlet, another hit. What say you? A touch, a touch. I do confess thee. It doesn't matter how hard the hit. It just has to be a touch. And I think in, um, like, Olympics matches, I think they've now got electronic stuff so that they can tell if there's an actual hit. Okay? The king, our son shall win. Queen, he's fat. And she thanks, Mom. <laughs> and scant of breath. Okay? Here, Hamlet, take my napkin. Rub thy brows. And she reaches forward and grabs the cup. Good madam, Gertrude, don't drink. I will. She doesn't just take a little sip. You know. These are Germans. She judges. It's the poison of the cup. 
I dare not drink yet, madam, by and by. She says, come, let me wipe thy face. Laertes, my lord, I'll hit him now. You think Hamlet doesn't hear that? Notice, because that's not on the side. King, I don't know. Don't do that, not now. Laertes. And it's almost against my conscience. Almost. Not quite enough. Okay. So, Hamlet says, come on, Laertes, for the third. They play again. They get angry. They scuffle. Right? Laertes wounds Hamlet. Why? Because his foil doesn't have the blunt tip covering the point. Right? And when he wounds Hamlet, then they scuffle, because Hamlet feels that. They scuffle, exchange rapiers or foils. And Hamlet wounds Laertes. King, part them. They are in six. They're angry. They're gonna, they're gonna hurt each other. And the queen. Oh. Horatio, they bleed on both sides. How? Oscar, how is it, Laertes? Why, as a woodcock to mine own spring, echoing his father's comments to Ophelia. What other phrase could he use? One that Hamlet used to describe what would happen to, <coughs> excuse me, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Waste with his own petard. He plotted this, and what happens? Boom. It blows up in his face. It backfires. I am justly killed with mine own treachery. Hamlet, how's the queen? King, oh, she, she fainted because she saw the plot. No, the drink, and oh, the drink, I play it. Oh, villainy, ho, let the door be locked, treachery, seek it out. Why the door be locked? Because I'm going to kill everyone who is involved in this. Okay. He's going to find it out. Laertes, it is here, Hamlet. Hamlet, thou art slain. No medicine in the world can do thee good. In thee there is not half an hour of life. The treacherous instrument is in thy hand, unabated. Right? And in venom, the foul practice hath turned itself on me. Lo, here I lie, never to rise again. That is, and because you stab me, I'm also dead. I've got less than half an hour. Thy mother's poisoned. I can no more. I can there. The word can has two meanings. Right? I can't do anything, but it also can the older meaning of the word in English, no. I know no more. I know. I'm out of words. The king, the king's to blame. The point venom, <clears throat> he lunges and stabs Claudius. Then venom to thy work. And notice, all the people, treason, treason. Why? Because Hamlet just stabbed the king. Or is it treason, treason? King has plotted against Hamlet. Oh, yet defend me, friends, I am but hurt. Hamlet. No, you're not dead yet. <laughs> so he grabs the king by the hair, tilts his head back, grabs the cup, and pours the poison down his throat. Here, thou incestuous murderous, damned Dane. Drink off this poison. Is thy union here? Follow my mother. Thy union. Hamlet's playing on that word. Claudius and Gertrude's union in marriage. Is I union here? Then follow her. Laertes. He, notice he still has a little more. He is justly served. It is a poison tempered by himself. And then what does Laertes ask for? Forgiveness. He says, exchange forgiveness with me, noble Hamlet. Mine and my father's death come not upon thee, nor thine on me. In the Lord's Prayer, there's a verse, there's a passage that says what? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Why? Because Christ said, if you forgive others their sins, they will be forgiven. He just said, I don't hold you to blame. For my death, 
for my father's death. I forgive you. So it's forgiven. Forgive me too. Hamlet, heaven make thee free of it. Heaven make you free of my death. I follow thee. I am dead, Horatio. Wretched queen, the duke, she's already dead. You that look pale and tremble at this chance, that is, the people in the hall and the audience, what? That are but mutes or audience to this act. Had I but time, but I don't, I could tell you, Horatio, I am dead, thou livest. Report me and my causal right to the unsatisfied. Who are the unsatisfied? There's going to be a hearing tomorrow in the Senate Judiciary Committee. Two people are going to testify. The person who is bringing an accusation against the nominee to the Supreme Court and the nominee to the Supreme Court. We, whether one currently believes one or the other of them, is totally irrelevant. Okay, We are the unsatisfied. Why? We don't have proof. We. Why do we not have proof? Because if that event occurred, where were we? Not there. We didn't see it. If it occurred, only the people who were there saw it. The unsatisfied here, everybody outside the room. Because you can imagine. Once those doors get thrown open, what's everybody going to say? Whoa! Hamlet's dead, the king's dead, the queen's dead, Laertes. How'd that happen? None of them out there saw it and heard it with their eyes and ears. But those within, they could go out and say, this is what happened. Tell my story, Horatio, Hamlet says. Well, what is Horatio? He would be what is called a corroborating witness. Why? He saw it. It wouldn't, it'd be different if Hamlet told Horatio to tell Marcellus to go tell everybody. Because as far as we know, Marcellus isn't here. What would Marcellus become at that point? Hearsay. He heard something said, but he's not an eyewitness. Horatio is the eyewitness, as well as a few others. Osric, for example. Okay. So, report me and my causal right to the unsatisfied. <laughs> Never believe it. I am more an antique Roman than a Dane. There's yet some liquor left. And he gets ready to drink. What does he mean, I'm more an antique Roman than a Dane? got a gloss. It was a Roman custom to follow masters in death. In other words, I, I, I can't live without you. Not because there's some homoerotic affair that some people want to suggest. He's saying, life without you in it, Lord, is meaningless. Hamlet, nope. And he swallows the rest of the poison. Horatio, what a wounded name, thing standing thus unknown, shall live behind me. That is, if you die now, what will people say about me? Hamlet killed the king. And he killed Horatio, uh, Laertes. He's saying, I need you, and you alone, <laughs> to go and make sure my story is told true. Things standing thus unknown shall live behind me. If thou didst ever hold me in thy heart, absent thee from felicity a while. What's felicity? Happiness. Joy. So how does he absent himself from happiness or joy for a while? You're going to see, when we get to the end of Oedipus the King, the chorus, or choir if you want, is going to say, count no man happy. 
until he is dead. Why? Because life, another Princess Bride quote, life, what? Is pain, Titus. Because life is pain, and then you die. So, absent yourself from felicity, from death, for a while. And do what? And in this harsh world, draw thy breath in pain to tell my story. Suck the breath that you take every moment as if you're sucking it through shards of glass. And do what? Tell my story. Why? Because it's true. Tell the true story. So they hear a noise. And Hamlet says, what is this? Ostrich. Young Fortinbras with conquest come from Poland. To the ambassadors of England gives this warlike volley. So, word is coming from England what? I've done what you ask. <laughs> Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. Okay. Fortinbras has come in. Hamlet, I die, Horatio. The potent poison quite overcrows my spirit. I cannot live to hear the news from England, but I do prophesy the election lights on Fortinbras. What's the election? Who's king? Right? Because there's nobody in line now to be king. He has my dying voice. Hamlet would be one of the electors. Hamlet would be one. It's not clear that Horatio would. Um, Osric probably would. Okay. Other advisors to the king, Voltamon might, and Cornelius might be. Polonius, if he were still alive, definitely would be. So tell him, with the occurrence more or less which have solicited. The rest is silent. Horatio, now cracks a noble heart. Good night, sweet prince. Cracks a noble heart. Hamlet's dead. Good night, sweet prince, and flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. Take you to heaven. Okay? And in comes Fort and Brow with the ambassadors and others. And Fort and Brow comes in. And what's this place look like? I mean, this is a hall of state. And there's bodies littered all over the place. Blood oozing. Claudius is oozing blood. Hamlet's oozing blood. Laertes is oozing blood. Horatio, what would you like to see? Fortinbras, where is this site? What is it you would see? If out of O or wonder is. <laughs> if you're trying to find woe or something that will kind of freeze your brain, you can stop right here. Oh, proud death, what feast is toward in thine eternal cell? That thou, so many princes out of shot, so bloodily hast struck. How did death, he is asking, kill so many nobles at once? The ambassador, we come too late. We came to tell him, Rosencrantz and Gilman's run are dead. What? Who's going to thank us? Horatio, not from this mouth, line 344 or so, the kings. Why? Because the king didn't want Rosencrantz and Gilmister dead. Had it the ability of life to thank you, that is the king. He never gave commandment for their death. But since so jump upon this bloody question, you from the Polar Wars and you from England are here arrived, give order that these bodies high on the stage be placed to the view. Notice, Horatio is giving orders, essentially, to the ambassadors from England and to Fortinbras. Have these bodies put up on a high platform for everybody to see. And let me speak to the yet unknowing world. Everybody out there who doesn't know why, how these things came about. So shall you hear of carnal, bloody, and unnatural acts. Carnal, of the flesh, means sex. Bloody, 
also means sex, but also means murder. Unnatural, incestuous sex. In murder, and especially murder of one's brother. Okay. Acts of accidental judgments. Oh, a rat. Damn. I thought you were your better. And uh, of accidental judgments, casual slaughters, of deaths put on by cunning enforced cause. And in this upshot, purposes mistook, fallen on the inventor's head. Purposes mistook. Where's the first one? Let's say. How about Polonius? What did he tell his son before his son went off to Paris? He gave him a list of precepts and he said, Write them in your mind. And then he didn't follow those precepts himself. Laertes gave Ophelia precepts. Right? It's like the family gives good advice, but they don't. Take it. Because Ophelia said what? Don't show me the primrose path to heaven while yourself not take it. Okay? Where else do we see plots that result in the death of the plotters? King? More than once. Because the ultimate plot was what? Kill Hamlet Sr., take his throne, take his wife, and that plot comes to fruition on his death. Okay? Purposes mistook fallen on the inventor's heads. All this can I truly deliver. In other words, put me in the witness stand. I'll tell you everything. Fortinbras, let us haste to hear to call the noblest to the audience. For me with sorrow I embrace my fortune. Notice, he seems to be implying, I know what my fortune is. I have some rights of memory in this kingdom. Traditional, remembered. He's saying, I have a tenuous claim to this throne. Uh, Hamlet Sr. dead. Claudius dead. Hamlet dead. Nobody, nobody else in line to the throne. It's me. Yeah, there still has to be an election. But what does he have in his favor that nobody else would have? Hamlet's dying vote. Horatio. Of that I shall also have cause to speak, and from his mouth whose voice will draw no more. But let the same be presently performed, even while men's minds are wild. That is, Hamlet voted for you. So, take four, like four captains, bear Hamlet like a soldier to the stage. What does he mean like a soldier? Is he saying Hamlet wasn't a soldier? Not necessarily. He means full military honors. This is like Arlington Cemetery. This is like John McCain's recent funeral. Or when JFK was killed. Now this was not only military, but presidential. You know, going down Pennsylvania Avenue in the wagon and such. Let Hamlet have that kind of funeral. Okay? For he was likely, had he been put on, to have proved most royal, that is, if he had ascended to the throne. And for his passage, his death, the soldiers' music and the rites of war speak loudly for him. Come on, take up the bodies. So, get four soldiers to bear Hamlet. The other three, get him out of sight. Such a sight as this becomes the field. What field? The battlefield. Imagine, just for a moment, we got seven minutes, we won't take them all. Imagine, though, for just for a moment, if Hillary Clinton Donald Trump, I don't know, Chuck Schumer, uh, who's the biggest Trump? Sean Hannity, okay? 
were all in some room in the White House, the East Room, with a bunch of courtiers, advisors and such. And there's suddenly CNN headline blurring, drudge, you know, red alert kind of thing. President, yes. Sorry, we got a minute. Um, president dead. Hillary Clinton dead. King um, Schumer dead. And one more. We'd all be wondering what the hell. It doesn't belong there. But one person would then be left to come out and tell us what happened. Okay, um, so there'll be a quiz over at three through five Friday. First thing. And then we will try to do a little bit of background of South Please and the first half about of Oedipus the King. Sounds like a way to make everybody happy.